Maniacs, how we doing? I know it's been a minute since you heard from me. I haven't built anything. I haven't uploaded any content. I haven't really put anything on Instagram. In fact, I actually took my original Instagram account down. However, there are reasons for that. Real life got real busy, real fast. I had to take a step back for a second, reprioritize the things that I needed to take care of and now that I'm fully recharged, I'm ready to go and start building some stuff again. So this little monstrosity that you see before your eyes is an M41 Walker Bulldog kit by Tamiya. And everyone has built at least one of these things. And everyone knows that they are not the best kits in the world. So we are going to take another stab at this today and try building another one. Yeet! $17.99 pre-inflationary prices. Only the best for your boy. Let's open her up and see what you get inside of this little Friday night special. Look at all that supreme green styrene we got inside. For its age, it's got some pretty good detail. Take a look at this upper plate. Decently detailed turret and turret basket. Got some figures and some poly caps. Bathtub style hull. Couple part sprues. Two sets of rubber tracks created by the devil himself. Ugh. A manual in Japanese. Holy crap, that's bright. Oof. And a manual in English. However, some of the instructions were not super clear. Could have been better. All right, enough talk. Time to get to it. So the first thing we're going to point out in this build is how unpleasant the underside of this hull is to look at. There's a lot of holes and a lot of injector pin marks and sprue gate that's left over. Now, the holes are there because to me, I used to make motor kits that you can drop into these tanks and make them move. Kind of cool. However, they don't make them anymore, so we're going to have to fill them up. I decided to fill the smaller imperfections with perfect plastic putty and spread it out with my Gordon Beers Passport Rewards card and fill up the bigger holes, first using a piece of cardboard as a base and then securing the piece with some super glue so that it could support the two part epoxy putty that I'm about to use. What, what? Mill a putt. Once you've prepared your putty, you just want to use some simple yet effective finger pressure to push it down into the recesses until it is flush enough where it can be sanded away. Now it's time for the main event, cutting and gluing. And for that, I'm using my Tamiya sharp sided cutters, making its first appearance in over a year. And to glue our sprue, we're going to use our Tamiya extra thin cement. Now, just a word of caution. I don't know if it's the age of the kit or the type of styrene. If you use too much of this stuff, it'll just turn your entire model into a pile of soup. So be careful and enjoy in moderation, especially these parts. The first time I built it, I used too much glue that softened it up way too much and damaged the hull and the torque from the tracks ripped it right off. Although this kit isn't particularly complex, it's not engineered very well. So parts do not want to fit where they're supposed to. Just be prepared to work with them a little bit. Like these tow hooks, for example. One, they are small and finicky. Two, the mounting holes behind them are too big. So what I would do is pre-apply your glue before you put the part into the hole and it'll soften up the plastic enough and make it a little bit tacky so it stays in place. Now, before anyone says anything, I didn't attach the pintle into the mount because it breaks off too easy. I'd rather pretend it's just a fix to something else. Now, the most complex part of this kit, but not necessarily the most difficult, is the fact that there's a bunch of road wheels that you have to glue together. You also have to clean them up because there's quite a bit of flash and other imperfection. However, everyone hates road wheels, so this is expected. Another annoyance came in the form of this barrel. It's two pieces, which isn't particularly unusual. However, this one fit together like crap. Left two gigantic seams that I had to take care of with a knife, sandpaper, and super glue. Wasn't a fan. So if I had to say the worst part about this kit, aside from some fitment issues, especially with the turret, is the fact that there's an inconsistency in detail. Now you look at the top of this turret and it looks pretty detailed. It looks good to me, especially for its age. However, you look at some of these weld seams and they look like crap, they're recessed. The real tank did not have recessed welds. Furthermore, right around this join seam, there was supposed to be a rather pronounced weld that early M41s typically exhibited. Um, connected the upper hole to the turret basket. Oh yay, another recessed weld, awesome. Gonna kill two birds with one stone here. Gonna fix the bad fit seam and also give it an appropriate weld texture. 
I really wanted to use a two-part epoxy putty to simulate that weld. It just wasn't going to work. So what I did was I took some Tamiya basic putty and some Tamiya extra thin cement to water it down. And then I'm just going to spread it on the appropriate area, which has already been masked off. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking watching me do this. How could you conduct such heretical acts when good modelers on YouTube like Night Shift have taught us all that we could just use thin epoxy snakes and sausages to get our welds the way we want? Well, it's not going to happen like that today. I'm sorry. But... The effect that we're going to get out of the way that I'm doing it is not so bad considering the scale of this tank is pretty small and I'm also able to fill that egregious gap that you see. Believe me, if I had the patience, I would have done it with the two-part epoxy putty. It's just that I can't be bothered. With a kit that is this old and this poorly fitting, I didn't want to devote that much time into it for such a small detail. I guess that's what separates me from from actual, you know, good modelers that I watch on YouTube. But the thing is, when you actually finish doing it this way, the end result is really not too bad looking. As we remove this masking, you'll see that the weld that it leaves behind is actually kind of convincing. But I know there's still a few of you out there that are like, look how they massacred my boy. So the M41 was a weird little tank. It wasn't very successful. They made only about 5,000 of them. It saw limited service with the US, mainly towards the end of the Korean War. Uh, it was extremely undergunned, had a 76 millimeter high velocity cannon on it. However, it was unable to compete with the Soviet main battle tanks of the era. So basically the US scrapped the idea and went straight to the Patton, which was a main battle tank. However, the weird thing about this tank was it was part rolled homogeneous steel and also cast. And as you can see, I want to add a little bit of texture to the cast areas of this turret using some of my leftover Tamiya paste that I thinned down with extra thin glue. And I think it came out pretty good when I was done. So we're almost towards the end of the construction portion of this M41 Walker Bulldog um, tank kit. And probably the worst part of the whole thing was putting these little protectors around the light assemblies. I couldn't stand any of this. They look like crap and they don't fit right. The exhaust pipes though, not too bad. Again, inconsistency in detail with this entire kit. Most of the stuff on the top of the turret and the upper plate of the hull look pretty good. Tool basket, also not very bad. Pretty detailed and it fits right in there. All right, the construction phase of this build is pretty much done. As I had explained before, this was not a particularly complex kit. There's not a lot of parts. Even with the poor fitment and fiddly parts and other oddities that I had to contend with and making the modifications that I had, it only took me about four or five hours. This M41 Walker Bulldog kit is probably one of the best for a beginner to get into. It's cheap, they're plentiful, it's not particularly difficult to put together, and most importantly, it's pretty fun. This is a fun kit. Um, sometimes the imperfections are what makes it fun because it makes you devise a way around them. So, all right, everyone, thank you for watching this video. To those who came back and still support me, thank you. I can't do it without you. And to those who are just coming to my channel for the first time, if you like this content, Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I drop the next part of this video, which is going to be painting and weathering. All right, everyone. Take care. Be safe. Enjoy modeling. And I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.